Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. Hello, my dear listeners. Welcome to the episode number 13 of our program dedicated to the discovery of the sacred Christian art. In this episode number 13, uh, today we analyze, we start our analysis of uh, some of the monuments of the Byzantine Ravenna. As you know, Ravenna is the marvelous city in the central Italy, the city that in the past episode, the episode number 12, I called as the second Byzantius, the second Constantinople. In the past episode, the episode number 12, I presented a list of the monuments in Ravenna, and in particular of the monuments in the Byzantine Ravenna. Today, uh, we can start our path at the discovery of these monuments in this marvelous city that is Ravenna, and I strongly hope you can visit this city in the future. The first monument I will speak about is the famous mausoleum of Galla Placidia. Please, my dear listeners, uh, if you want to have an overview on the theme of this episode, you can uh, start to listen also the episode number 12, and then to listen to this episode number 13. The mausoleum of Galla Placidia, Galla Placidia is written Galla Placidia, pronounced in Italian, is a Roman building based in, located in Ravenna in Italy. It was listed with seven other structures in Ravenna in the World Heritage List in 1996. The UNESCO experts described it as the earliest and best preserved of all the mosaic monuments, and at the same time, one of the most artistically perfect. This building was formerly the oratory of the Church of the Holy Cross, and now contains three sarcophagi. The largest sarcophagus was thought to contain the remains of Galla Placidia, she died in 450, and she was, as we recalled, the daughter of the Roman Emperor Theodosius I. Her embalmed body was reportedly deposited there in a sitting position, clothed with the imperial mantle since Galla Placidia was the daughter of an emperor. But later, in 15. 77, however, the contents of the sarcophagus were accidentally burned. The sarcophagus to the right is attributed to Galla's son, the Emperor Valentinian III, or, as many think, to her brother, the Emperor Honorius. The one on the left is attributed instead to her husband, that was the Emperor Constantius III. The building is not currently used as a mausoleum. Its original purpose is totally unknown. The most common story is that the structure was built by Galla Placidia. She strongly wanted this monument. She was a well-known patron of the arts and uh, she wanted the place to be used as a mausoleum for her and for her family. There seems to be no evidence to prove or to disprove Dalla's connection to the building. The mausoleum was once connected to the narthex of Santa Croce, that is the Holy Cross, the church for the Imperial Palace in Ravenna, built in 417, but now all in a room. Santa Croce, Holy Cross, 
was one of the first buildings commissioned by Galla Placidia. The floor has been raised by five feet since the 5th century in order to remain above the rising water along the upper Adriatic coast. As you know, my dear listeners, in fact, Ravenna is uh, the city of uh, one of the main cities of the Adriatic Sea. For what concerns, all water is related to the architecture of the mausoleum of Galla Placidia, and all what concerns the interior art of this marvelous mausoleum. Mosaics, the famous Ravenna mosaics, cover the walls of the vault, the lunettes, and the cupola. The iconographic themes developed in the decorations represent the victory of eternal life over the death. The mausoleum is uh, laid out in a cruciform floor plan with a central dome on pendentives and barrel walls over the four transepts. The exterior of the dome is enclosed in a square tower that rises above the gabled lateral wings. The brick surface is set with narrow mortar joints and decorated with blind arcades. The interior of the mausoleum is covered with rich Byzantine mosaics and uh, light enters through alabaster window panels. The effect is beautiful, try to imagine. The inside contains two famous mosaic lunettes and the of the interior is filled with mosaics of Christian symbols, and in particular, of apocalyptic symbols. The central base upper walls are decorated with four pairs of apostles, including St. Peter and St. Paul, acclaiming a giant gold cross in the center of the dome against the blue sky of stars. This is one of the most uh, famous mosaic uh, in Ravenna, symbols of the four evangelists float among the clouds. The other four apostles appear in the barrel walls of the transepts. The lunette over the north entrance shows a mosaic of Christ as the good shepherd tending his flocks. He holds here, in this representation, he holds an imperial staff joined to the Christian cross, symbolizing the combined earthly and heavenly domains. The lunette over the south wall is talked to depict St. Lawrence standing next to a flaming gridirion. On the opposite side of the gridirion, a bookcase is shown with four books, each inscribed with the name of an evangelist. We can say that the art historian Gillian Mackey argues that this panel represents the Spanish San Vincent of Saragossa, greater than the Italian San Lawrence. Gillian Mackey cites Galla Placidia's connection to Spain. In addition, St. Vincent of Saragossa was martyred by drowning at the sea, and Galla Placidia, with her children, had been delivered from a shipwreck. The panel seems to be an illustration of the poem about St. Vincent of Saragossa in Prudential's 5th century, so-called Passio Sancti Vincent Martyrs. Passion of Saint Vincent of Saragossa. In the poem, Saint Vincent is ordered to disclose his sacred books to be burned. This explains the cupboard containing the Gospels, which has no satisfactory explanation in the story of Saint Lawrence. I can say that I accept 
this position of uh, the art historian Chilean Mackey. I can say that uh, I found it uh, uh, as a very deep analysis and um, acceptable analysis. The other representation is the representation of the good shepherd. The lunette of Christ as the good shepherd over the north entrance of the mausoleum of Galla Placidia is representative of Christian art at this time period that was the time of the late antiquity. Christ is being depicted as more regal than prior depic depictions of him as a good shepherd. And you know, my dear listeners, we spoke about the first representations that are in the catacombs, especially in the catacombs in Rome. Rather than carrying a lamb over his shoulder, Jesus sits among, uh, amongst his flock, hallowed and robed in golden purple. The mosaic represents a transition period between the naturalistic depictions of the classical period in art history and the stylized representations of the medieval period. The forms still have a three-dimensional bulk, but the shedding, such as in the folds of the robes, is less refined than in the past, and figures are not very grounded. Elements of realism have been sacrificed for a focus on the spiritual elements. This is all what concerns our analysis of the mausoleum of Galla Placidia. The second monument I want to speak about is the famous mausoleum of Theoderic. The mausoleum of Theoderic, in Italian, the famous mausoleo of Teodorico, is an ancient monument just outside Ravenna. It was built in 520 by Theodoric the Great as his future tomb. The current structure of the mausoleum is divided into two decagonal orders, one above the other. Both are made of Histria stone. Its roof is a single 230 tone Istria stone, 10 meters in diameter, so I can say very huge. A niche leads down to a room that was probably a chapel for funeral liturgies. A stair leads to the upper floor. And located in the center of the floor is a circular for fiery stone grave in which Theodoric was buried. His remains were moved during Byzantine rule when the mausoleum was turned into a Christian oratory. In the late 19th century, silting from a nearby rivulet that had partly submerged the mausoleum was drained and excavated. The mausoleum was inscribed with the seven other so-called, this is the correct title, early Christian monuments and mosaics of Ravenna, buildings as one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 1996. According to what we call the ICOMOS evaluation, and I quote, the significance of the mausoleum of Theodoric lies in its Gothic style and decoration, which owe nothing to Roman and nothing to Byzantine art, although it makes use of the Roman stone construction technique of Opus Quadratum, which had been abandoned four centuries before, and in the fact that this mausoleum is the only one surviving example of a tomb of a king in this period, because Galla Placidia was not a king, she was the daughter of a king. 
Well, there is a curiosity, especially for you that are living in the United States. Listen to me. An approximate replica of this tomb was constructed in the USA in 1925 when the Teplin George Dam was constructed north of Fergus Falls in Minnesota. Please write me an email if you already knew this fact. mferry. Uh, sorry at oliapostles.edu. mferry at oliapostles.edu. Listen, the designer that was uh, Vernon Wright, if I don't make a mistake, who was also the president of the dam's owner, the Otter Chail Power Company, based the design of the powerhouse on this mausoleum of Ravenna. So, in 1925, the Teplin George Dam was constructed north of Fergus Falls in Minnesota. And Vernon Wright, that uh, I think was the designer and was also the president of uh, the dam's owner, the Otter Tail Power Company, based the structure, the design of this powerhouse on this mausoleum. The third monument, third and last for today, waiting for the episode 14, in which I will continue this path, is the Basilica of San Vitale. The Basilica of San Vitale in Ravenna is a church. It is one of the most important surviving examples of early Christian Byzantine art and architecture in all Europe. The Roman Catholic Church has designated the building as a basilica. Basilica, as you know, is the honorific title bestowed on church buildings of exceptional historic and ecclesial importance, although it is not of architectural basilica form. The Basilica of San Vitale is one of the eight Ravenna structures inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. The church was begun by Bishop Ecclesius in 526, so we are in the 6th in the sixth century, when Ravenna was under the rule of the Ostrogoths and completed was completed by another bishop of Ravenna, Maximian, in 547, preceding of some years, the Byzantine Exarchate of Ravenna. We, are sti we still are in the late antiquity. The construction of the church was sponsored by Julius Argentarius, a banker and architect, of whom very little is known, except that he also sponsored the construction of the basilica we will speak about in the episode number 14, of St. Apollinar in Classe at around the same time, the same period. A donor portrait of Julius Argentarius may appear among the courtiers on the Justinian mosaic. The final cost amounted to 26,000 so-called solid gold pieces, and from the Latin term solid, comes the Italian term soldi, that is money. It has been suggested that Julian originated in the eastern part of the Byzantine Empire, where there was a long-standing tradition of public benefactions. The central vault used a western technique of hollow tubes inserted into each other, rather than bricks. This method was the first recorded structural use of terracotta forms, which later evolved into modern structural clay tile. The ambulatory and gallery were vaulted only later in the Middle Ages. And uh, let me add that the Baroque frescoes on the dome was made uh, in the 18th century, 
late 18th century by uh, other uh, architects. For what concerns the architecture of the Basilica of San Vitale, we can say that the church has an octagonal plan. The building combines Roman elements, the dome, shape of uh, doorways and stepped towers, and uh, with Byzantine elements, the, tar, the polygonal hips, capitals, narrow bricks, and early example of flying buttresses. The church is most famous for its wealth of Byzantine mosaics, the famous Byzantine mosaics of Ravenna, the largest and best preserved outside of Constantinople. And this is the reason why, as you know, my dear listeners, Ravenna is called the second Constantinople, the second Byzantine. The church is of extreme importance in the Byzantine art as it is the only major church from the period of the Emperor Justinian I to survive virtually intact to the present day. Furthermore, it is thought to reflect the design of the Byzantine imperial place audience chamber, of which nothing at all survives. The bell tower has four bells. The ten are one dating from the 16th century. According to legends, the church was erected on the site of the martyrdom of San Vitalis. However, there is some confusion as to whether this is the San Vitalis of Milan or the San Vitale whose body was discovered together with that of San Agricola by the Bishop St. Ambrose of Milan, discovered in Bologna in 393. But remember that Bologna is close to Ravenna. For what concerns the mosaic art here inside in the Basilica of San Vitale, the central section is surrounded by two superposed ambulatories in the Basilica of San Vitale. The upper one, the matrimonium, was possibly reserved for married women. And from the matrimonium comes the term in Italian matrimonio that is wedding for us. A series of mosaics in the lunettes above the triforia depict the sacrifices from the Old Testament, the story of Abraham and Melchizedek, and the sacrifice of Isaac, the story of Moses and the burning bush, Jeremiah and Isaiah, representatives of the 12 tribes of Israel, and the story of Abel and Cain, a pair of angels holding a medallion with a cross crowns each lunette. On the side walls, the corners next to the mulio, the windows, have mosaics of the four evangelists under their symbols, the angel, the lion, the ox, and the eagle, and dresses in white. Especially the portrayal of the lion is remarkable on its ferocity. The cross rib the vault in the presbytery is rich, ornamented with mosaic festoons of leaves, fruit and flowers, converging on a crown encircling the Lamb of God. The crown is supported by the four angels, and every surface is covered with a profusion of flowers, stars, birds, and animals, including many peacocks. Above the arch, on both sides, two angels hold a disc and beside them a representation of the cities of Jerusalem and Bethlehem. They symbolize the human race, Jerusalem representing the Jews and Bethlehem the Gentiles. All the mosaics are executed 
in the Hellenistic Roman tradition, according to the Hellenistic Roman tradition, lively and imaginative, with rich colors and a certain perspective, and with a vivid depiction of the landscape, plants and birds. They were finished when Ravenna was still under Gothic rule. The apse is flanked by two chapels, the prothesis and the diaconicon, typical for Byzantine architecture. Inside, the intradose of the great triumphal arch is decorated with 15 mosaic and medallions depicting Jesus Christ, the 12 apostles, and Saint Gervasius and Saint Vitesius, the sons of Saint Vitale. The Theophany was begun in 525 under Bishop Ecclesius. It has a great gold fascia with the twining flowers, birds, and horns of plenty Jesus Christ appears. Seated on a blue globe in the summit of the vault, robed in purple, with his right hand offering the martyr's crown of to Saint Vitale. On the left, the Bishop Ecclesius offers a model of the church, representing the project of the church. And uh, let me speak about, to conclude, the famous panels of Justinian and Theodora. At the foot of the outside walls are two famous mosaic panels, completed in 547. On the right is a mosaic depicting the East Roman Emperor Justinian I, clad in Tyrian purple with a golden halo, standing next to court officials, Bishop Maximian, Palatine guards, and deacons. The halo around his head gives him the same aspect as Christ in the Dome of the Apes, but is a part of the tradition of rendering the imperial family with the halos described by Ernest Kantorovic in the king's two, in the king's two bodies. Sorry. Justinian himself stands in the middle of this representation, with the soldiers on his right and clergy on his left, emphasizing that Justinian is the leader of both church and state of his empire. The later insertion of the Bishop Maximian name above his head suggests that the mosaic may have been modified in the same year, 547, replacing the representation of the prior bishop with that of the Maximian. The golden background of the mosaic shows that Justinian and his entourage are inside the church. The figures are placed in a V shape. Justinian is placed in the front and in the middle to show his importance with the Bishop Maximian on his left and lesser individuals being placed behind them. This placement can be seen through the overlapping feet of the individuals present in the mosaic. Another panel shows Empress Theodora, solemn and formal, with a golden halo, crown and jewels, and a famous representation of a group of court women, as well as eunuchs. The Empress holds the Eucharistic vessel for wine, and her panel differs from that of Justinian in having a more complex background, with a fountain, a cupola, and lavish hangings. My dear listeners, in the next episode, the episode number 14, I will analyze the other monuments in Ravenna, the Basilica of Santa Polinare Nuovo, the new Santa Polinare, then the other Basilica of Santa Polinare, that is the Basilica of Santa Polinare in Classius, outside Ravenna, then the Ravenna Arian Baptistry and the Ravenna Baptistry of Neon. May God bless you, my dear listeners, and uh, let's uh, see uh, 
uh, let's uh, listen each other in the next episode, the episode number 14. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.